today we're looking at a Allen and Thurber pepper box. These were one of the early multiple shot revolving pistols. Instead of a cylinder and a barrel, this is basically all cylinder. These are muzzle loaded. This one I think is 30 caliber. They made them in a number of different calibers and this time period they made a 28 through 30 pocket size which I believe this one is. Most of them were 32 to 34 and there was even a 36 that was a Dragoon version. I've tried to get video of all the different markings on this gun but it just did not look great. So my solution is to take photos and I'm either going to chroma key them onto the screen so it's just the item we're looking at or I'll just put up the whole photo. Depends on which one looks better. The barrel of this one's marked Allen and Thurber Worcestershire which you can look up the maker's mark of the markings on this and give a pretty good idea of when they were produced and for this Allen and Thurber Worcestershire mark it's probably produced between 1847 and 1854 so it's 162 to 169 years old after that it says patented 1837 cast steel that's pretty much all the markings on the barrels the hammer has Allen's patent there's a scroll work decoration here and on the side plates on the back strap of the grip going down here there's even markings little engravings this one does have a few pieces that have been replaced I'm pretty sure this screw's been replaced on this guard this screw here I, I know for certain is the original one stuck out and this screw here that holds the side plate on it's really chewed up but I believe it's been replaced but I think it's a period replacement when it's tightened the engraving doesn't quite line up disassemble this there is a plain screw on the end of the barrel this is a six shot version most were six but they also made a five but first we remove that screw and that allows you to pull the barrels off now with that screw off the barrels will, will slide forward a little bit and you're gonna have to lift the hammer just a hair to pull them out and you've got a main rod it's got a little bit little area here that's been shaved down compared to the end here in the back that was pretty common for black powder stuff there's a lot of fouling and carbon residue and this gives it an area to go into so it doesn't lock up quite as easy now the back of this which I'll show in the photo has a, quite a bit going on you've got the nipples which are cast in with the barrel so they're non replaceable you have a kind of a dished area ring on the outside followed by teeth going one way on the next step and then the inside step are teeth going the opposite direction on the inside of this at the top we have the hammer under that there is a spring loaded detent and that goes in the first ring and that pretty much uh, keeps it lined up after that there is a lifting arm on this side see if I can get good good angle I'll get a photo of it that lifting arm when you pull the trigger rotates the cylinder and as you get to the top down here there there is another piece that protrudes out and that sort of locks the cylinder to keep the timing on I don't know if they had issues with them rotating or not before this but this model has that and it pretty much locks that cylinder in place the trigger guard has a 270 and a 2 marked on it the hammer has Allen's patent and I believe that's 
all the marks on the outside besides the engraving. Now to take the rest of it apart, there's one screw here on the grips, which we'll take them out first. And it goes through to the other side. Now you want to be real careful when you unscrew old screws from guns. You don't want to force them. They'll get chewed up like this one, which I'll show that in a minute. The grips have a recessed section here that slides up underneath the frame. On the back of this one, there's a 270 and another set of numbers which are just barely reg legible that appear to say 3401. I'll get photos of that. The other side also has a 270. This one, the zero is kind of rotated and this spot up here is notched out and I'll show you what that's for. There's a spring in here that clears that. This screw here is pretty gnarled up. The engraving on it does not appear to match the engraving on the slide plates but it does have the uh, similar to it so I think it's the original screw but I'm not sure if it's original to this gun. Here's the original screw. It's got, I think these are called wood threads on it, but it's a, it's not, doesn't look like modern threads. I'll take a photo of that. And then the side plate lifts off. And it's cast. There's four little raised areas that lock into the gun. It's frame. And this raised area where the screw goes through that's been drilled. Now I'm going to put the put the grip back on that has the shaved out area. And so I'll, I'll be doing photos, but you can see how that spring, it, that shaved out area allows the spring to be clear through its, its movement. Though it does not move a whole lot, that's the only issue, I could, only reason I could see it to do that. Uh, we got a, quite a few markings. The, apparently the serial number on this firearm is 270. Here on the spring we have a 270. The frame has a 270 right next to it. This piece here, which is part of the mechanism, has a 270 on it. And the bar in the back has a 270 on it as well. It's not very visible, but it's there. And I don't see one on the trigger. But the way this works is you pull the trigger that lower bar that's part of the locking mechanism is right here in the front of the trigger. I'm going to try to zoom in closer. There's that mechanism working. See, this is the sear. That piece back there is the ratcheting arm. And then on the front, right there, is a locking lever or a locking arm. And as the, bur the trigger is pulled, it goes forward, the elevator goes up, and then it drops. Here is the detent. That's pretty much how this gun works. This here, the screw that I said wasn't original, is right here. And it might be the original screw that's been filed down, although it doesn't appear to be. It appears to be a replacement. That is a tensioner for the hammer. For the hammer spring here. 
And basically you add tension to that and that makes the string the spring stouter. The secondary spring here is just pinned in. It's just pinned in. I'll put a photo up. These grips have a alignment peg hole. That aligns here on either both sides have that. That keeps them in place. Yeah. Kind of see where that's cut out for that spring to clear, even though it doesn't move much. But that is pretty much the Allen and Thurber pepper box. So these were notoriously inaccurate, but at the time it was better than a single shot pistol. A lot of the single shot pistols weren't very accurate then either. I'm hoping to fire this. I'm pretty sure this is a 30 caliber. On the caliper, I'll get a photo because I don't, it doesn't want to focus, but it's 0 .30301 almost. They sort of vary between 305 to 301. And I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be a 30 caliber. The 30 caliber was more common uh, than the 29. I would assume it was more common than 29. Most are probably going to be 32. So I believe Colt had a 32 at the time. But this would be a one of the pocket size, I think. I believe. If it's a 32, it's it's a tight 32. But I'm hoping to get some probably number one buckshot out of a couple of donor shells and be able to fire it. I'm guessing, I've tried to find some load data on it, and I haven't had much luck. I'm guessing 10 grains of black powder would work, and that's what I'm going to go for. And I'll probably shoot it over a chronograph and then see just how inaccurate they actually are. But that'll be in a later video. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it or learned something. Till next time.